All right, the lighting's really bad. Uh, I'm by a very dim street light. Just got off work. Uh, so the mask is off. Erdogan uh, praised oh, a genocidal maniac today or yesterday on Twitter. He tweeted high praise for <clears throat> Enver Pasha. Enver Pasha being one of the three leaders of the Young Turks uh, that massacred two million Christians, up upwards of 1.5 million Armenians. Uh, so today in Baku, Azerbaijan, Erdogan, the leader of Turkey, praised a genocidal maniac, Enver Pasha. He was the minister of war. So Talat Pasha was the uh, grand vizier during the genocide, he was the minister of the interior. In other words, he had the most powerful position in the country. The Grand Vizier, well, until he became Grand Vizier, the Grand Vizier was kind of a figurehead, not that powerful. The minister of the interior was in control of the people, the population, the, the, uh, the economy, uh, transportation, communication, the most powerful position. Enver was the minister of war, and Jamal Pasha, was the minister of the Navy. So these three were the heads of the Young Turks that put it, put forward a policy that led to the massacre of, well, what I would say is the first mega death of the modern era. Actually, maybe the first mega death ever. A mega death is a, a, term, a term that simply means one million deaths. So they are responsible for the first mega death in human history, uh, uh, an active killing. Uh, anyway, so the, the mask is off. Uh, one of our uh, uh, high Oscar, uh, I think it was Oscar, he was commenting on, I think it was yesterday's video, uh, saying they should make a movie about Enver Pasha. And I don't know if, if Erdogan had already made that comment when you made your comment, but if if you made your comment before Erdogan did, then you're you're in line. You're in line with the leader of Turkey that you're all for genocide. And I'm not talking about an opinion. I'm talking about historical data. And I'm not talking about just what the Armenians say. I'm talking about what Turkish historians say. I, I've been working with a Turkish historian for the, the last year, year and a half. Yes, I've been working with an Armenian historian. I've been working with a German historian. I've been working with a, a, a Jewish historian, American historian. I'm working with team, a team of historians. And one of the main, one of the leaders of my team is, he took me to Istanbul. He took me to Germany. He's, he's at a very prestigious university and he's Turkish and he teaches Ottoman history and he teaches the genocide and that Enver Pasha was a genocide, one of the three leaders, one of the three men responsible, one, one of three who wanted to return after they were exiled after the war ended and they were on the losing side of the war. They were sentenced to death. That's Talat, Enver, and Jemal. They were sentenced to death in the Ottoman Empire, but they had already escaped and they were coordinating their return. They wanted to return to power and they were assassinated. They were assassinated. Talat was assassinated by Sogolman Talirian. Enver was killed. He was in Russia at the time. And <laughs> Armenians argue it was a Russian, uh, an Armenian-Russian that killed him. I don't know that that's true. But Jamal, I think, he, well, <clears throat> they didn't return to power. I think Jamal, well, I don't know if he was assassinated or if he died. I don't know. I forget. But I know what happened to Talat. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, we'll make this a shorter one. Uh, today, the president of the United States pulled off another Middle East peace deal. Like, like for real, like Morocco, an Islamic nation in the Middle East, has normalized or recognized Israel. And the reason I bring that up is my contention that the quickest way that Artsakh will be recognized, that Artsakh will get sovereignty, the quickest way will be under a second term of Donald Trump. Don't know if that's going to happen. 
<laughs> there's crazy <laughs> stuff going on right now. Uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter, and Joe Biden's brother, Jim, are under investigation. They've been under investigation, but uh, the press all denied it, uh, pretended it wasn't true until now, six weeks after the election. Uh, the bombshell news that the Biden's business partner came forward, this guy named Bob Alinsky. Anyway, so there's all kinds of crazy stuff happening. Uh, Texas is suing Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, and Wisconsin in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court may take it up and may rule in a way that will see to it that Trump remains in office. Uh, for stated for Artsakh, that's a good thing. That's what you want. And and today today's peace deal with Morocco and between Morocco and Israel is a sign of that. Now I know a lot of Armenians are very upset with Israel because Israel sent weapons to Azerbaijan and Israel has a good relationship with Azerbaijan and, and Armenia has a good relationship with Iran and Iran and Israel are mortal enemies and it's a very complex geopolitical situation. But the reason I say it's good, this peace deal, this number one, it is what we want to happen for Artsakh. It's an example the Islamic nations have not recognized statehood for Israel. And that's what's happening with these peace deals. Uh, Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, is the one, the point man in this foreign relations uh, negotiation. And he's, this is like the fourth Middle East nation that has recognized Israel, normalized relationships and recognized it as a state. And so that is what we want to happen for Artsakh for the United States, for all countries to recognize art soccer. So that's why uh, the importance of peace in that part of the world, if the dominoes keep falling and all of, you know, most of the Muslim nations recognize Israel, then that same uh, mentality will continue under a tr uh, Trump presidency that, that these um, hot spots in these conflicts come to his attention. He's already aware of Artsakh. He's already, he's already aware of the conflict between Azerbaijan and, and, and Armenia. So, this is a good sign. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is a short one. Oh, please subscribe and share. Um, I, I noticed the subscriptions are still going up, even with these awful, awful production value videos. Um, if you're new to the channel, go watch some of the older videos. Uh, you know, that's, I'm, I uh, just got off my night shift and my schedule's gotten crazy, but I'm still going to post videos. And this is the quickest way actually for me to do it. So, um, subscribe, share, and comment. Commenting is good. Commenting actually helps the YouTube algorithm. So, um, I'm glad the debate goes on. Sorry, Oscar. Enver Pasha is not a hero. He's a bad, bad guy. You know, I'm sure he had plenty of good qualities, but when you are responsible for massacring innocent people, it's kind of hard to overlook that.